Okay, YouTube. This is the third. Um, this is the third chapter in my series of how to make Tron-like effects in Blender. Um, let me show you what we're going to have at the end of this uh, chapter. So where we start off is we have our mesh over here, and we have our U the UV unmapping coordinates here. Uh, the first thing we need to do now is we need to add an image, the image that we're going to be drawing on. So you just say add. Let's uh, double the size because more is better and we have big computers so we can do that. Uh, we're going to name this Tron Body Texture and we're good to go. Let's save it and we're going to name it here as Tron Body Texture. All right. Now we're saved. Now we can see that in our directory the file is right here. If I opened up in GIMP it would be black. Uh, but let's do a little bit of editing, editing in Blender first and then we'll go to GIMP. Okay, so a good way to edit, to start to edit your drawings is to click on Texture Paint. Now our texture, I have to tell you, is uh, mirrored. You don't have to do mirrored and um, I'm doing mirrored just because it's easier right now but if you were doing uh, a character that had some decals on one side and then other decals on the other side you would have removed the mirror modifier before you UV unwrapped um, and then then you would have the whole character I just UV unwrapped half of it so as you see if we draw here, let's just change the color to white we only need the color in black and white here and I'll explain later we draw we are actually drawing on both sides of the figure alright so what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna be doing some real simple drawings and uh, I'll add to the end of this some speed drawings that you'll see what contributed to the final product um, and you can do your own artistic drawing it's not as important in the lesson of a how-to Oh, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but to position one, three, seven. So three does the side. So I'm going to add something to the arm here. You notice I'm not, I'm not spending a lot of time on detail here, and the reason is I'm going to be doing the detail in GIMP because GIMP is a much better drawing tool than Blender. Sorry, Blender people, you make a wonderful tool, but it's not for drawing. All right, so I'm just going to add some some key things, different places on our character. So we'll see later how these actually work with UV mapping. And add something to his leg. Maybe it comes up midway. And make sure we don't paint on the thumb. Make a circle here. All right. Let me do a little bit more and then we'll actually get to the content here. So, circle there, circle there, just go around. Now, you notice sometimes when you draw here, it'll do funky things like this. I don't know exactly why it does that yet, but we'll have to address that separately. Alright, let me just put the spinal column detail in. Really think spinal column art really makes the back of a character. Uh, I will be adding more later. This is just just for now. Okay, so this is a good starting point. Let me just add something on the calf so we have some reference of where the calf begins and ends. All right. I don't like how that looks. It looks like pantyhose or something. I don't know. But we'll, we'll stay with it for right now. Okay. So you can see now there's our beginning texture. You can see it over here, too. What we're going to do is save it. But, oh, I don't know where the save button go went. Um, and it used to be there. 
but for the time being, bef before I figure that out, we're just going to do save as every time. We're going to do save as right on top. And now we're saved. We can go into GIMP. We can say open. Um, forgive me, I have to go to the directory. And there's our image. So let's see how it drew it. We can go to edit mode. And now you can see the overlays of what we what we drew to the polygons. We we may be going into here later to do some art. So let me let me show you how you would go about doing that. You would click here and say image painting. You could go back here to texture paint. Oh, you can't go to both at the same time. Uh, go to your edit mode, and then go again to texture painting. And let's say we wanted to add some detail. Oh, by the way, um, your scrolling mouse makes this go in and out. You click down on your scrolling mouse and you can move around. Slightly different than regular Blender. You would have to hit Shift and push down to move around. So let's say we wanted to add another spine. Now this is how we could do it. Or we wanted to, and we can, we can do this for GIMP, is we can add a little bit of uh, reference information to say, you know, this is where, this is kind of like where the line was of this structure. So when we go to GIMP, we'll know where it was. Obviously, I'm going quickly because, you know, I don't want to make you guys wait. Okay. So now we can go to GIMP. Let's reload the image. Oh, we have to save it first, don't we? Save. Go to GIMP, open it up, and there's our image. So one of the reasons why, you know, I didn't do that much detail is when we go into GIMP, it's a lot more tools for detail. So I'll show you one example. Um, here we have a circle. Obviously it doesn't look like a circle. We're going to, oh, a perfect circle. So we're going to click in the center and we're going to drag out. And we're going to hit Control and Shift and check that out. Perfect circle. We're going to go to the middle again. We're going to hit Control. See the minus sign? We're now going to do a minus select. We're going to drag out and we're going to let go of Control. Control Shift again. And then we're going to stop right there. Now we can do a perfect, perfect circle. Check that out. Need a bigger brush. Bigger brush. Wow. Now to get rid of that existing circle, do an invert. And let's change this to black. And the existing circle is gone. Let's save it. And then we go back and we say reload. And there is our updated circle. We'll go to texture paint. And you can see there is our updated circle. So we've made a lot of progress. I'm going to save it. All right. The next thing we want to do is um, we're going to want to render what we got. So uh, F12 is for render, and you can see we don't have anything going on, and we only have light from one source, and we don't have a head. So we have a lot of problems to fix. So first, let's pick fix the positional stuff. So I've opened up three 3D views hit 0, and this is camera view. Let's get back into object mode. So we need to get the camera getting the whole body in. A good way to do anything with the camera is do it from you know, either the front or the back. Now we want to rotate it. You can rotate and hitting R, and that rotates from the position of the screen. You can rotate it by using these, but we really want to rotate it if you can notice, this is not the way the camera is. This is based on your view of the screen. To change that, go down to here, Transformation Orientation, and we want this to be, I think it's normal, yeah. So now it's based on the object orientation, not on the orientation of the view that you're looking at. Okay, and now I want to move this back a little bit because I want to get his whole body in. 
Alright, and you can move it by hitting here. G is to move, by the way. There you go. We have one light. It's in the front. Lights are cool. But let me sh and let me show you some cool things that we're going to use instead of light for right now. We're going to use ambient. And we're going to do that. So let's hit F12 and see what we've learned or what we've changed. There's our whole figure. Let's decrease the ambient just a little bit because that was really bright. Just a little bit more. But you can see how ambient is better for a light in some situations. Like you can see the whole figure. If I turned off ambient, looks more glossy. And that's also because of the texture. But you get deeper shadows. So if I looked at it from the back, it wouldn't look very good at all. So we're going to turn on ambient. And we're going to look at it like that. Now, so we solved the camera problem and the lighting problem. But we still don't have any textures. So the next thing to do is highlight the main character. Okay. And go over to textures. Say new. And say glow texture. So we're going to use this later on as our glow texture. We want to change this type from clouds to image. And we want to find our image. So let's see where we can find it. There we go. There's our image. Shows up up there. Now, if I render it out at this point, it should come out. It's not there yet. We'll figure it out. It wasn't supposed to be ready. It was, it was, hopefully, it was going to come out really ugly but it didn't yet, but don't worry. The next thing we need to do is define how it's going to map. So it can map by all these ways. We don't want any of these. Okay, so where is we want to map by UV? Filter? Nope. All right, I had the wrong object selected. Remember, you click on the main guy's object, you make the glow texture, and we updated the image. So now we want to see what it looks like. And what we see that it looks like is fairly ugly and not what we expect, not what we're looking for. And one of the main reasons is because of the way it's, it's connected to the object. Let's change this to UV. And this is the UV uh, that we made. And if we render it now, there we go. It is now rendered the way we wanted it to, with the, the thing in the front. All right. Uh, here's another trick I'm going to show you. We want to see the whole object. But you know, if we move the camera around, we're not going to get um, a really smooth um, turning angle. What I like to do is I like to add a circle, extend it out like that. Go to the parent, make the circle, I'm um, go to the camera, make the circle a parent by saying object parent set. And now watch this. I can rotate this, right? And I can get different views of our character, but keeping the the camera at the same angle and altitude and stuff like that. Alright, so our texture is now on. Let's go back to our man. Now we want to change the color depending on what kind of guy our guy is. Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? And we want to change the emit. Check that out. All right. I'm going to remove emit for a while because that's tomorrow's lesson. So Here's color, and there's the there's the uh, textures on him. The white comes from this, so we can make him a little bit more gray. And uh, there we go. We can turn on emit, but it won't do much at this stage. It'll just make it a little more brighter. 
So we've applied the texture and um, you've seen it and you've learned how to rotate the camera. Now I'm going to do a little bit of image work and then produce the final product. Okay, I've done a little, as you can see, I've done some changes to the model. I've cleaned up the image quite a bit. Now, if you don't like the artwork, you know, make your own artwork. That's what this is all about. Um, okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is really quick, I'm going to show you how to render the model so then I can have a finished model to show at the beginning of the video to show you what you're going to have. What I like to do is I like to rotate when I render. So how you do that is you click on the circle, you uh, hit I, and then you hit rotation. Okay, and you move this little thing. Oh, we are on the the dot sheet. You move the frame to about a hundred. Back here, you say R ninety, enter, and then we're gonna save that rotation. You go to two hundred R ninety. Save the rotation, 300, R90, save the rotation, and then 400, R90, save the rotation. And I like to do just one more, just for the heck of it, R90, save the rotation. Now with that, I'm going to render it, and to render it, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to set the keyframes to 1 to 400 and I'm going to set this to 640 and I'm going to set this to 480 I'm going to double check to make sure the model is in my view he is in my view, I'm going to change this to 100% and then I'm going to start animating and um, in a little bit of time we'll see the model okay this is all for this lesson the next lesson is um, it's going to be really quick I'm going to show you how to get the glow effect, which um, is, you know, that's what when we all think about Tron-like effects, we think of the glow effect. All right, until next time.